This is Christopher John Bjorkness. It is January 1st, 2024. This is going to be my New Year's Day special, and I have a uh, really good one in store for you. For uh, many, many years, I've been saying that Benjamin Netanyahu, this creepy guy up here, is a uh, Messiah, son of Joseph, and that he is going to give birth to Messiah, son of David, and that we're all going to endure a series of increasingly frequent and increasingly uh, intense catastrophes. And these are known as the Chevle Mashiach, the birth pangs of the Messiah. And I found all kinds of additional proof that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is Messiah, son of Joseph, the Messiah anointed for war. It is not coincidental that he started his major wars, which are going to lead to the destruction of all humanity if we don't stop them, uh, in the year 2023. And that is because they are faking the seven-year tribulation period, which they mean to have last from 2023 to 2023. 30, as in Agenda 2030 of the WEF. None of this is coincidental. It's all been planned out for thousands of years. I'm going to show you the uh, biblical, Talmudic, and Kabbalistic proof of all that. The year 2030 corresponds to the 2,000-year period from 30 A.D., until 2030, when uh, Messiah, son of David, is meant to be born. Christians view that as the uh, second coming of Christ. And the Talmud dates it to the exact same period of 30 AD, 40 years before the destruction of the temple, when the uh, scapegoat sacrifice rituals on Yom Kippur began to fail. So this is all happening by design. It's all artificial. It's all being faked by these people. And uh, this guy is the one that they chose to play the role of Messiah, son of Joseph, who's going to kill us all so that Messiah, son of David, can reign in peace and not bloody his hands. Uh, Joseph's going to hand it to him on a clean platter because David himself had spilled blood and God was pissed off at him. So his descendant, Messiah, son of David, is supposed to have clean hands that haven't shed blood like uh, King David, the treacherous King David, had. So I'm going to uh, go through and uh, give you some background on Netanyahu. <laughs> and what I found is it, it just blows my mind. It's, it's so distressing and so alarming, and yet at the same time, so interesting and fascinating that uh, this guy is uh, set up to kill us all. And uh, it's part of a 2,500-year-old plan that's clearly spelled out. Once you see the text that I'm going to read to you, uh, it all makes perfect sense uh, what they're doing to them, uh, despite the fact of how intensely immoral and inhuman it is. But uh, they laid it all out a long time ago. And if you're really interested in this stuff, and you should be because your life depends upon it, please watch to the very end, because at the end, I'm going to read the prayer of uh, Messiah, son of Joseph, of his generation, Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. He is the uh, one who famously stated, as quoted in the Talmudic writings, that uh, the best of the Gentiles deserves to be killed. Uh, he was very anti-Goyim. Most of the uh, things in the Talmud that claim that Gentiles are mere beasts and that their seed is the issue of asses like the Egyptians in Ezekiel, I think, 23. Um, all that comes from Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And uh, Moses de Leon attributed his work, the Zohar, which is extremely anti-Gentile and uh, calls for the complete extermination of all of the Goyim. He attributed that to Shimon Bar Yochai. And there is a very important text 
uh, called The uh, Prayer of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And I'm going to save the best for last, and I'm going to read extensively from that. And you will learn that everything they are doing today is exactly according to the script planned out in the prayer of Shimon Bar Yochai, Shimon Ben Yochai. And um, uh, we got to stop this because the end of the story is that uh, a million Jews are slated to be mass murdered and together with them, all the rest of humanity. And uh, each step in this plan has been carried out uh, right up until this uh, beginning of the birth pangs of the Messiah, this seven-year tribulation period that uh, Netanyahu uh, kicked off in 2023. And that reminds me, uh, it was a crappy year. Uh, it was a very rough ride for me, and I want to express my deep, deep, sincere gratitude to everyone who contributed to me in 2023. I wouldn't have made it through without you. Uh, you kept me going, and I'm going to hit it hard in 2024. And I want to thank you for uh, providing me with that opportunity. Really deeply grateful to you all. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. So let's look at uh, Netanyahu. Even his name that his daddy picked out identifies him as Messiah, son of Joseph. And this is, this is really incredible, incredible stuff. So we have uh, Netanyahu, born 1949 in Tel Aviv. His father was a staunch Zionist, and uh, he was a historian specializing in the Jewish golden age of Spain. It was a golden age because uh, the Muslims were very close to the Jews and project protected them, and the Jews had their golden age while living under the Muslims in Spain. And it turns out that uh, Netanyahu has Sephardic ancestry, which ties him to the Dernmei and Shabbatai Tsevi. And he is also descended from the Vilna Gaon, the Gaon of Vilna, who... Uh, was descended from supposedly the Davidic line and declared that he himself was Messiah, son of Joseph. So we have here a dynasty, a dynasty of a Sephardic Jew who was presented as an Ashkenazi Jew who is descended from Messiah, son of Joseph, the Gaon of Vilna, who himself has become the Messiah anointed for war, Messiah, son of Joseph, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. And Netanyahu means God has given, and that's very important, as is his first name, Benjamin. So let's uh, dig a little deeper. Benjamin is extremely important to the whole um, mythology of the birth pangs of the Messiah, because Jacob's wife, Rachel, uh, gave birth to Benjamin and died suffering through the birthing pains of giving birth to Benjamin. And that is where they get the concept that the, uh, the birth pangs of the Messiah will be a series of catastrophes, like the 10 plagues on Egypt. And like a woman's contractions in labor, they'll become more frequent and more painful and more intense until humanity is destroyed as Rachel was destroyed, giving birth to Benjamin. It's also important to note that Rachel's other son from Jacob was Joseph. So Joseph and Benjamin were brothers, the two messiahs, Messiah son of Joseph and Messiah son of David, are twin brothers. And uh, Messiah, son of Joseph, represents the evil side, the murderous side. And Messiah, son of David, represents the holy side, the side of goodness. So his name, Benjamin, means son of my right hand. So when you combine, God has given Netanyahu 
with his first name, Benjamin, you have God has given us the son of his right hand. That's what Jesus, another Messiah, son of Joseph of his generation, was called. He was called the right hand of God. Lucifer was also the right hand of God. The right hand of God is uh, Ha Satan, the accuser. And um, Benjamin Netanyahu is the accuser. He's accusing the whole world of anti Semitism. He is playing the role of Satan to uh, kill off humanity, and he is duping Christians into committing mass suicide by waging wars for Israel. And that is the exact scripted role of Messiah, son of Joseph. And that was explained by the Gaon of Vilna, the Messiah, son of Joseph of his time, and uh, one of the early -er ancestors of. Netanyahu in his supposedly Davidic line from the root of Jesse, which the Messiah, son of Joseph, has to be and as Jesus Christ was. We also had Rachel uh, naming him Ben-Oni, which means son of my trouble. Uh, Messiah, son of Joseph, is Satan. He brings trouble and uh, he is a dupe Placidus figure who brings ruin upon uh, the Jews, as did Jesus Christ, as is his role, so that they can obtain the punishment from the side of Din on the uh, Sephirotic tree of life, and thereby obtain redemption. And then it flips over to the right-hand side of the tree of life to Chesed, which is the mercy of the Lord. And the mercy of the Lord will be obtained through all the terrible things that Netanyahu is going to do to Jews and to humanity. And that's the plan. And I'm going to show you the whole script. It's, it's really mind-blowing. I hope, I hope uh, people appreciate the danger that we are in and can uh, form the links between what I'm going to show you and what's been happening to us and uh, all the destruction and devastation, the pain, the amputated limbs of Palestinian children, the tens of thousands of dead, uh, all that's going on in Ukraine and Russia where brothers are slaughtering each other. This has all been scripted out and I'm going to show you the script. So uh, Netanyahu revealed that uh, he is of Spanish descent, a, a Sephardic, as well as being descended from the Vilna Gaon, who, as I said, was also a Messiah, son of Joseph. He's uh, from Lithuanian Jews. And one of the things that I want to bring out in uh, this video, I was going to do a whole thing about it, but uh, I may as well start covering it now. I've been talking about this war between the Sephardic Jews and the Ashkenazi Jews. Now, the Zohar and uh, the story of Jacob and the story of Esther is all about subversion, about putting in people who pretend to be something they are not into the enemy's camp so that they can mislead them and bring them into self-ruin and destruction while concurrently uh, bringing everyone else in the world against them. And the uh, Sephardic Jews have been doing this to the Ashkenazi Jews for a thousand years. Uh, Judah HaLevi wrote in his book, about the Khazars. He's the source of most of what we know about the Khazar. Converts to Judaism, that converts are wretched, that they have souls which are vastly inferior to uh, what he described as the authentic Jews, the Jews by blood. And he said that converts can never become a tzaddik. They cannot become a righteous prophet and see the map of creation and ascend to the highest levels of heaven. Uh, Halevi was a Neoplatonist, and uh, he believed in Merkava mysticism, that there would be this ascent to heaven of the righteous, and he said that converts could never achieve it. And this has been a consistent hatred that the Sephardic Jews have borne toward the Ashkenazi Jews for a thousand years. 
more than that, probably, if there's uh, any truth to the Khazar legends that uh, Halevi uh, left us with. So what the Sephardic Jews have done is they have infiltrated the Ashkenazi Jews, the way that Jacob and uh, the Zohar and the Mossad and every uh, uh, much of the other uh, Judaic literature uh, instructs them to do the story of Esther. So um, they are misleading the Ashkenazis into their own destruction. And Netanyahu is a big part of that. The Likud party is a big part of that. Likud has always been pro-Sephardic pro-Mizrahi and pro-Middle Eastern Jewish because it wants to lead the Ashkenazim into destruction as happened in Europe during the Holocaust. So just as they infiltrate and subvert uh, many of the Gentile nations, if not all, they have also subverted the Ashkenazi camp and become their leadership. Now the Gaon of Vilna who we have now learned is uh, of Sephardic descent, at least partially, according to this legend. <laughs> uh, he was very opposed to the Hasidic movement. Um, the Baal Shem Tov, Shnur Salman, and uh, that ilk that uh, has created the Chabad Lubavitch movement. And uh, they are very pantheistic in the sense of Spinoza, they engage in magical rites and rituals and celebrations, orgies, very much like the Shabbatians and the Gaon of Vilna and the Misnagdom uh, oppose that. Uh, the Gaon of Vilna's legacy are the Purushim, the uh, Natura Karta Jews who pretend to be opposed to Zionism, despite the fact that the Gaon of Vilna said that he wanted to send 600,000 of his followers to Palestine to exterminate all the Palestinians, to wipe out Amalek. Uh, he was, uh, gave the complete plan to pit Esau and Ishmael against one another, as is happening today. Uh, the Roman West is fighting the uh, Ishmaelites of Islam. All of this was scripted out by the Gaon of Vilna. And these uh, Natura Karta <laughs> clowns have the chutzpah to pre pretend that they're opposed to all this. But uh, as I've shown in my other videos, it's all part of a setup. So I don't need to go over that again. But it's important to understand that Gaon of Vilna and now Netanyahu, his descendant and his heir in the dynasty, of Messiah, son of Joseph, going back to Jesus. Uh, <laughs> according to the Davidic line and the root of Jesse, uh, they are uh, setting up the Ashkenazis and they have infiltrated the Ashkenazi camp. They have uh, seized control of Chabad Lubavitch through Netanyahu to be the staged and scripted Messiah, son of Joseph, who is going plans to bring on uh, the destruction of Israel, uh, all of this being prophesied for hundreds, thousands of years, I should say. Uh, they want to wipe out a lot of people, cause them great misery to obtain the final redemption. And they want to lure the West, lure Christians into fighting for them, as if that's going to bring about the second coming. But the second coming for them is uh, Netanyahu as the return of Jesus, leading the Christians into their own demise and uh, putting them through these birth pangs that were prophesied in Matthew 24 so that they are completely killed off. And once that happens, then uh, Messiah, son of David, can be crowned. He will be the, um, the uh, Sephardic uh, king Messiah. As I explained in terms of Ezekiel 37, the uh, two sticks of the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom will be united in the rule of Judah, which will be represented by the Sephardim. The Ashkenazim will be wiped out if this plan comes to culmination. And um, so let's uh, let's look at some of the proof of what I'm saying. <clears throat> it just it boggles my mind. It's it's incredible. So uh, Netanyahu <clears throat> was uh, celebrated by the Lithuanians. Uh, Vilnu, Vilna is uh, Vilnius, the capital 
of Lithuania. These are Lithuanian Jews, the Gaon of Vilna came from Vilnius. It was a great center of Jewish learning and Jewish Kabbalah under Messiah, son of Joseph, Gaon of Vilna. And Netanyahu himself said, one, I think, is the first European coin that has, I think it is, the first European coin that has Hebrew letters on it. They uh, created a coin to celebrate the Vilna Gaon in Lithuania, and they also created stamps, and they uh, presented these to Netanyahu. Hagra, and second, I have a personal connection to it. My family came from Lithuania, and my family has links to the Gaon of Vilna. So it's both for us a national connection, but also a personal connection. And I'm very grateful to you. This will be on my desk, he said. And he traveled through Lithuania and um, he visited uh, the sites that were related to his heritage in Lithuania. Uh, he decried the anti-Semitic acts that happened against the Jews of Vilnius and uh, of Lithuania. He didn't say anything about the communist mass murders of the Lithuanians, but uh, I don't want to digress. So uh, Netanyahu is asserting that he's descended from Gaon of Vilna, and that's important because they are both Messiah, sons of Joseph. They both called for vast wars and uh, complete destruction of entire peoples. Uh, this article from Chaim Friedman uh, has a lot of good information. Uh, it gives the ancestry of the Vilna Gaon and says that he was descended from King David, as Messiah, son of Joseph, has to be, and as uh, Netanyahu is supposedly by extension. And um, since most of the prominent rabbinical families are interrelated due to the Shaduchim matchmaking, uh, there was a core of medieval rabbinical families who were descended from Rashi. And then he goes back and uh, through them to Rashi and to King David, and he ties that to the ancestry of Vilna Gaon. You can read that. This is the URL for it. Now, this is where we get down and dirty and into the murderous campaign to destroy humanity that the uh, Vilna Gaon was very much a part of and that uh, Netanyahu has taken up to uh, kill us off. So I'm going to be reading from the voice of the turtle dove, uh, Kol Hator. This is an English translation. It um, was produced by Rabbi Hillel Shocklover, who was um, a relative and student of the Gaon of Vilna and recorded uh, his Kabbalistic beliefs, his plan to pit Muslims in the West against each other, the uh, Leviathan and Behemoth, as I've explained in my other videos. If this is new to you, I suggest you check out my YouTube channel, CJB Books on YouTube, and look at those videos. Um, they are also portrayed as the ox and the donkey, as um, the Behemoth and the Leviathan, etc., etc. So uh, this was uh, Gaon of Vilna being presented as Gaon Mashiach ben Yosef. So he starts off by saying that the Gaon of Vilna is Mashiach ben Yosef. With regard to the final generation is as follows. According to Rabbi Eliyahu, all the steps um, the 999 steps, all the rules and details concerning the period from the beginning of the redemption until its conclusion will include the ingathering of exiles and settlement of the Holy Land. See, the uh, Naturi Karta are frauds because they are Purushim who follow the Vilna Gaon and his plan 
to uh, settle the Holy Land. All these are the assignment of the first Mashiach, Mashiach ben Yosef. Mashiach ben Yosef is primordial chaos. He precedes the holiness of light. He precedes Messiah, son of David. He is Messiah, son of Joseph. And he wages all the wars of destruction because he is Satan. He's from the left-hand side. He's from the side of the Gentiles. He's from the side that the Ashkenazis are playing to bring the Christians into self-destruction. They derive from the left side. That is from the quality of din, the quality of punishment, the quality of accusation, severity, judgment, all the roles that Satan plays as Hasetan, the accuser, which prevails when the awakening starts from below. That is a Neoplatonistic idea from chaos at the bottom of the great chain of being. Naturally, as occurred at the time of the Second Temple, during the reign of Cyrus. Cyrus is identified as one of the Messiah sons of Joseph, of the left side, of the evil Gentile side of the Sitra Akra, in uh, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1. And he helped to bring about the uh, restoration and creation of the Second Temple and the restoration of the Jewish people to Palestine. And that is also supposed to be the role of Messiah, son of Joseph, of the Gaon's generation. He didn't bring it about, so now it's up to Netanyahu to accomplish all this. Later on, the redemption will be completed with the quality of Hesed. That's what I was talking about before. That's the right-hand side in the middle of the tree of life, and it represents the mercy of the Lord, as opposed to the severity, accusation, temptation, and judgment of Din which is also called Gevura, which means strength or power. So Netanyahu is representing the strength and power of Satan to destroy everything. And once everything is destroyed, on the right side with Messiah, son of David, that will be when uh, most Jews, they plan to kill off, they plan to kill off all the Gentiles. And uh, then they will receive their mercy in the messianic era to follow. The Gaon's basic approach is contained in the words Ad Yosef Chai, which means Yosef is still alive. He is alive in the Gaon's descendant, Benjamin Netanyahu, God has given us uh, as his son, the right hand. As we stand on the threshold of the redemption, we must learn well all the 156 characteristics, etc. So I hope people understand the significance of this. We are dealing with a mortal existential enemy whose scripted role is to exterminate us. And Jewish people, I hope you pay attention to this. They are pitting the world against you because the prophecies have always been the plan to pit the world against Israel so that it creates massive destruction and death, genocidal mass murder of Jewish people to bring about the redemption so that they can get chesed, the mercy of the Lord, all because of the sin of the golden calf and because of Adam's sins and all other kinds of mythologies which never happened. So why uh, 2023 was such, such a horrible year and the beginning of uh, what the Christians call the tribulation, the seven years uh, broken into three and a half year periods as related in Daniel and as interpreted by Christians for thousands of years, but also by the Talmud, which said that uh, 40 years before the destruction of the temple, uh, the... Uh, the Yom Kippur sacrificial rituals to Samael uh, began to fail. So that times it to uh, 2030 being the end of the tribulation and 2023 being the beginning of that period. And uh, Christians are abuzz talking about all this. And uh, Hosea chapter 6, verse 2 
after two days. Two days in uh, the eyes of the Lord represents 2,000 years. Each day is 1,000 years. Will he revive us? In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. So they're taking this as proof that the um, tribulation will end two days after the um, crucifixion of Christ, which they assert occurred on April 7th in 30 AD. So that's why we have Agenda 2030 to represent the end of the tribulation period and the return of Christ, which um, Netanyahu and company plan to be the Messiah, son of David, after uh, the real return of the Christ in his own form, Benjamin Netanyahu, Mashiach, Ben Yosef, Messiah anointed for war, the Christ returned as the Antichrist, has led deluded Christians into exterminating themselves and battling with Ishmael and the Marxists of Russia and China and North Korea and all the Muslim nations until we're all dead and mutually consume each other. That's the plan. I've proven it in many places, and now I'm going to show you some of the major details. So this is Psalm uh, 94, verse, chapter 90, verse 4. For a thousand years in thy sight, meaning God's sight, are but as yesterday when it is past and has a watch in the night. So those two days of uh, Hosea represent 2,000 years from 30 AD or 2030, Agenda 2030. Christians also talk about it uh, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So this is uh, the Talmud in Yoma 39b. Yoma has a great deal of information about the scapegoat ritual of Yom Kippur and uh, how it was utilized to transfer the sins of um, Judea onto the Gentile nations, as explained in the Zohar. The sages taught during the tenure of Shimon HaTzadik, the lot for God always arose on the high priest's right hand. After his death, it occurred only occasionally. But during the 40 years prior to the destruction of the Second Temple, which was 70 AD, which marks it as 30 AD, the lot for God did not arise in the high priest's right hand at all. So too the strip of crimson wool that was tied to the head of the goat that was sent to Azazel, that Samael HaSetan, did did not turn white, and the westernmost lamp of the candelabrum did not burn continually. So that means that there was no atonement uh, for Israel for this entire 2,000-year period. So there has to be a massive sacrifice and slaughter to accomplish all that atonement and redemption so that the chesed, the mercy of the Lord, can be obtained and so that the din and gavura the punishment and strength will all be exerted against the wicked of Israel and against all of the goyim to uh, kill us all off. And that's what's going on today. And I hope people understand that because our lives are in jeopardy. So this is, uh, this is all tied to why 2023 kicked off the... Uh, the seven-year tribulation meant to culminate in Agenda 2030, according to the plans, which are presented as if prophecies. Uh, that agenda is to kill us all off by 2030. They're going to present it as if it's not so bad that we'll simply be enslaved and um, we'll be happy about it. But uh, the uh, prophecies, which are the, the authentic plans of Messiah, Son of Joseph, say otherwise, and uh, it's really a call to genocide to kill us all off. And they will succeed if we don't stop them. They have something called the Samson option, where Israel will launch all of its nuclear weapons against the world, Mordecai, Venunu, 
and Ehud Olmert confirm the fact that Israel has hundreds of nuclear weapons, and this could bring about the destruction of humanity. The plan is to have uh, Edom and Ishmael battle it out, kill each other off, kill off Messiah, son of Joseph, then Messiah, son of David, uh, wipes out the Persians, and we're meant to be brought into war with the Persians so that uh, the Persians can destroy the fourth empire the way they destroyed the first empire of the Babylonians. And then the fifth empire of Judea can arise and unite the two kingdoms by exterminating the Ashkenazim and creating a Sephardic kingdom to rule by itself in peace with 600,000 immortal androgynous souls in a perfect world in which robots serve as their slaves and in which they can mold chaos by their own divine will. So let's start digging into uh, scripture and other things that prove uh, all of what I'm saying. This is going to be familiar to many people who are familiar with Christian and Judaic eschatology. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 talks about the beginning of the birth pangs, which uh, Christianity takes to mean the return of Christ. But the Kabbalah makes very clear that the return of the Christ, Christ returns as the Antichrist to wipe out the anti-Semitic Christians. And what will be the sign that you are going to appear as king? This is the return of Christ and that the end of the age is upon us. We are at the end of the age of Pisces, the two fish, Leviathan and the behemoth monsters battling it out to give way to the age of Aquarius. Uh, all this is just the start of the birth pangs. He lays out all the horrible things that will happen brother turning against brother, as we see in Ukraine and Russia. And all of this was forecast and is a copy of, um, of the Greek mythology of the Iron Age, which comes after the other metallic ages and the ages of the heroes, as I've explained many times. Then the end will come. So the Christian... Uh, doctrine and scripture reveals the fact that Jesus is going to come down and kill us all. And uh, the crazy thing is, is that the dispensationalists uh, came up with this, uh, this notion uh, that has roots in um, the uh, crypto Jewish rabbis of the uh, Jesuits, um, Lacunza and Rivera. And this idea of the rapture that we that uh, this young woman dreamed up that the Christians are going to be sent up into heaven and they're going to be spared all the misery of the tribulation. Well, 2023 was the first year of the tribulation and uh, no Christians <laughs> have been raptured. So uh, they should wake up to the fact that it's all a bunch of BS. It was uh, designed to make them complacent and to welcome the idea of Esau and Ishmael mutually consuming each other and uh, to welcome the idea of the restoration of Jewish people to the land of Palestine in which they were always a foreign people themselves claiming to be descended from Abram of the Babylonian city of Ur. And uh, they've been duped into playing along with this game, which the ultimate plan is to kill them off. And Jesus, <laughs> Jesus even makes it very clear in Matthew, in Luke, and in Revelation, and in multiple apocalypses, Christian apocalypses, in the Apocrypha and other uh, non-canonical books that state that the plan is to kill everybody off and destroy everybody and leave only a remnant of 144,000 uh, virginal Jewish males to uh, live in Jerusalem while everybody else goes to uh, kingly heaven of Jesus after a thousand year messianic period. It's, it's all so crazy and, and they're going along with it and they believe it. They believe it's God given. Okay, Matthew uh, 24 continues. For then shall be great tribulation, 
such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. That was 2023. It's going to be seven years and it's going to lead up to uh, Agenda 2030. And uh, we're all supposed to be dead by then. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Sounds a lot like nuclear war, as does uh, Zechariah 14. And that's exactly how the Christian Zionists interpret it. And uh, they're playing along with Messiah, son of Joseph, Netanyahu, is been spending a lot of money getting the uh, Christian Zionists to subvert American interests in favor of his wartime agenda. And uh, this agenda calls for us all to be nuked. Uh, the loonies believe that they're going to be raptured. They're not going to be raptured. They're going to be murdered together with the rest of us. So their heartless plan uh, calls for the demise of their own children. But uh, they're playing along and they're going to kill off their own kids if all this succeeds, as well as themselves and everybody else. So, uh, once again, this is the idea that the childbirth, the birth of Messiah, son of David, has to be attended by the death of the mother giving birth through the labor pains, and that the labor pains become increasingly intense. And all this is brought about uh, by... Benjamin Netanyahu, the son of his mother's trouble, son of my right hand, God's given son of God's right hand, Messiah, son of Joseph. So uh, it all fits. And the fact that his father named him that way and uh, he came to be Messiah, son of Joseph, indeed is not likely to be coincidental. Uh, this is also scripted out in Jeremiah chapter 30. Can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? It will be a time of trouble for Jacob. You often hear of the time of Jacob's trouble. And that's what this tribulation is all about. So it's not just Christianity. It has also been part of Judaic lore for 2,500 years. But he will be saved out of it, saved out of it after millions of uh, Jews are planned to be murdered. It's, it's so insane. No longer will foreigners enslave them, meaning uh, the Judahites. Instead, they will serve their God and David their king. That's the second Messiah who's being given birth to by Messiah, son of Joseph, through bloodshed whom I will raise up for them. Though I completely destroy all the nations, pay attention to that. That means every Gentile on earth is meant to be exterminated. Nations in Hebrew is the word goyim, among which I scatter you, I, and they are scattered to the ends of the earth. So that means everybody by design. I will not completely destroy you, but he's going to destroy a hell of a lot of them. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. So all of the crazy Ashkenazi Jews around the world who are helping Netanyahu to uh, bring about this destruction of humanity, please understand that you are also targeted by all of this as you were in the Holocaust, and they are going to uh, mass murder millions of you according to plan, as I'm going to demonstrate to you. So uh, please <laughs> withdraw your support in your own self-interest, if not out of any humanitarian desire. Uh, just as Matthew talked about the birth pangs of the Messiah, um, it's to be understood that Christian literature is a product of the oral tradition of Judaism, as is the Midrash, Talmud, and Kabbalah. So it is not surprising that they are in a total agreement and they're all working towards the same ends. Christians are simply being duped 
into committing mass suicide uh, by this uh, Judaic plan as are, <laughs> as are uh, the Ashkenazis and the Judites. So the Sanhedrin in folios 97a through 98b uh, lays out all of these series of catastrophes of the labor, the birth pangs of the birth of Messiah, son of David, talks about how Messiah, son of Joseph, is going to bring them about so that Messiah, son of David, can be born. Uh, the son of David will not come until the Roman power enfolds Israel for nine months. It's nine months because the gestation period of a full-term human birth is uh, nine months. So it's going to take nine months for David to be born through the wars and tribulations that Messiah, son of Joseph, is going to deliberately bring about. As it was written, therefore, he will give them up until the time that she with which travaileth have brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Ula said, let him, the Messiah, come but let me not see him. Uh, so you can read all this if you want by pausing the video. Uh, what is your reason for not wishing to see him? Shall we say because of the birth pangs? In other words, they're scared crapless because they realize that these horrible catastrophes are going to fall on them as well as the rest of humanity. Preceding the advent of the Messiah so I want people to understand that this has been planned out for well over a thousand years, for 2,000 years, and it's documented. We have this. We can uh, take them to court with this. We can save ourselves from them. If we get some leadership in government that will defend our interests, we could save humanity from this plan to exterminate us. But it has been taught. Rabbi Eleazar's disciples asked him, what must a man do to be spared the pangs of the Messiah? He answered, let him engage in study and benevolence. You'll hear Nicarte, uh, Natura Carta Jews telling their fellow Jews to study the Torah because they believe in this crap and that by studying the Torah, they will be spared what's going to be inflicted on the rest of humanity. Let him engage in study and benevolence and you, Master, do both. He replied, I fear lest sin cause it in accordance with the teachings of Rabbi Yaakov ben Edi, who opposed two verses, it is written, etc., etc., etc. This is an alternative version. The other that I was reading from was the Sanchino a translation of the Babylonian Talmud. This is from Sepharia. Rav says, the son of David will not come until the evil Roman kingdom, that's us in the West, will disperse throughout Eretz, Yis Eretz Yisrael, uh, the land of Israel, for nine months, as it is stated. Therefore, he will give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth, that's representing Rachel and the birth of Benjamin. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return with the children of Israel. Once a period equivalent to a term of pregnancy passes, that's the nine months of horror that uh, during which Edom will be completely exterminated. So they're giving us nine months uh, to be killed off. And uh, the Babylonian Talmud in Yoma Folio 10a, uh, explains exactly what I just said. Furthermore, it is the king's decree that the builders will fall into the hands of the destroyers, as Rav Yehuda said, that Rav said, the son of David will only come when the wicked kingdom of Rome, meaning all European peoples, and especially Christians, spreads its dominance throughout the world for nine months. That's the rise of the Antichrist, Armalus, as explained in some of the apocalypses I'm going to get to. As it is stated, therefore, he will give them up until she he who is to bear has born. Then the remnants of his brethren will return with the children of Israel. The duration of Rome's rule over the world will be the duration of a pregnancy, nine months. I've been saying that um, 
Trump and uh, Putin are playing the role of Armalus in this script. I've been saying it uh, for a very long time, many, many years. And uh, we are headed towards that disaster. So, all of this is meant to prove on this, <laughs> this beautiful New Year's Day 2024 that uh, 2023 was set up to be the beginning of the tribulation. Uh, Agenda 2030 is set up to be the culmination of the tribulation in the time by which all of humanity is exterminated together with most of uh, the Jewish people in the world. And then uh, Messiah, son of David, is supposed to be born out of all of this uh, tribulation, turmoil, catastrophic contractions and birth pains of the labor of Messiah, son of David. Uh, I've been talking about these apocalypses for decades in my book of 2005. I wrote about the, I quoted entirely Buxdorf's translation of, um, of the Avkat Rochel, which includes the wars of King Messiah and uh, gives the uh, 10 plagues that befall humanity and destroy us all. I have the, uh, the war... Wars of King Messiah, that was republished in Avkat Rochel, which was translated by Buxdorf. The, I've been talking about the apocalypse of Zerubbabel and Armalus, Messiah, son of Joseph, Messiah, son of David, for decades, and I hope that people will finally start to listen. But today, I'm really going to hit hard the revelation of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Again, he is the guy who wanted to kill off even the best of the Goyim. He is the purported author of the anti-Gentile Zohar. He is the purported rabbi of most of the anti-Gentile passages in the Babylonian Talmud. So in these, uh, these apocalypses, it has a common script of this idea that Rome and Persia fight it out and just as Persia was the one who restored uh, the Jewish people from the Babylonian captivity and helped them to rebuild the temple, Persia, Iran, Medea is once again supposed to help destroy the Roman Edomites who instigated the uh, Roman exile, the Galut. And um, that is meant to have the Persians, the uh, second empire wipe out the fourth empire of the Romans, just as they wiped out the first empire of the Babylonians. And all of this is scripted out in these apocalypses. So uh, pay careful attention. We're about to get to it. Um, the book, Outline of the Neo-Hebraic Apocalyptic Literature by Moses uh, Button Wieser, uh, has a good uh, description and analysis and very concise and brief of each of these apocalypses, which are so very important to understand because this is the exact script that they're uh, playing out. And I'm going to prove that to you. So Talmudic, then in post-Talmudic times, uh, for example, we see from a passage in Yoma 10a, for which Rabbi Joshua ben Levi, a contemporary of Sapor I, is mentioned as the authority, how in presence of the victorious wars of Sapor I against Rome, the prophecy contained in Daniel chapter 8 about the war between the Medo Persian and the Grecian kingdoms was believed to refer to Sapor's wars with Rome. Greece was the third empire and to determine the ultimate issue of these wars an old apocalyptic tradition was cited according to which the advent of the messiah rome the fourth and last worldly monarchy that's us in the west who's meant to be completely exterminated would be for the space of nine months extend her godless dominion over the whole world similarly in shabot 6b, there is a passage dating from the time of Sapor II's wars with Rome, in which the statement in Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, about the fourth worldly monarchy, that's Rome, is quoted 
to show conclusively that no other outcome is possible than that Rome should triumph over Persia. Uh, the later works say that uh, Persia triumphs over Rome, then Messiah, son of Joseph, is killed, then Messiah, son of David, wipes out Persia. In Sanhedrin, folios 97 to 98, there are preserved a number of apocalyptic calculations of those times. Also, among other things, excerpts from Revelations, which the above-mentioned Rabbi Joshua Ben Levy, who also figures as the author of an apocalypse, see below, was supposed to have received from the mouth of the prophet Elijah, as well as from the Messiah himself. Uh, this is the famous verses about uh, the Messiah and the uh, attending to the lepers. Hey, I think we're there. I think we're to the point where I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to hit you with the heavy stuff now. Um, it's so crazy. I wonder if people have a hard time believing it. But I'm going to show you the script, the plan that they set forth in uh, the prayer of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. This one. And um, the events that are set forth and the sequence of the events, the players involved, the nations involved, the peoples involved, the empires involved, it's all scripted out and they are fulfilling it. And the way this script ends is with all of us dead. So please pay attention because your life depends upon it. My life depends upon it. I want to continue to live and they want these seven years to be the seven years in which we're all killed between 2023 and 2030. So uh, this is one of the English translations of the prayer of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. There is an alternative translation presented on uh, the Safaria website, which I believe was conducted by the Safaria community. Uh, this is the URL. You can probably find it by putting these keywords in quotes in uh, Google to get to it. <clears throat> uh, I highlighted the ones from John C. Reeves translations just to make it easier for all of us. And uh, this is the script. This is more detailed than uh, the Zohar, which is also attributed to Shimon Bar Yochai. It's more detailed than Sefer Zarababel. It's more detailed than the Wars of King Messiah. And you can see as uh, we read through it that uh, it depicts the plans which are today being carried out. The second king who will arise from the Ishmaelites will love Israel. The Ishmaelites are the Muslims. They are the behemoth. They are the ass, the donkey, the descendants of the Egyptians with their poison semen, who was introduced as, ha as um, Abraham's descendant through Hagar. They're supposed to be the wild man, always at war with everyone else. And they're supposed to represent the ass of Egypt, which is the God of Israel, Seth Typhon, who will avenge all of the Israelites by destroying Esau, the, uh, the Romans, the fourth empire. The second king who will arise from the Ishmaelites will love Israel. He will repair the breaches of the temple, make war with the descendants of Esau. We see that as uh, the wars between the West and the Muslim and Marxist countries of the East, and slaughter their armies. There shall arise a king whose name is Marwin. He will be a herder of asses, and they will make him, and they, and they will take him from following the asses and coronate him as ruler. The Edomites shall arise, and we see uh, asses being slaughtered and their heads being posted in, uh, in Palestine on uh, the gates of uh, cemeteries. The Edomites shall arise against him and kill him, 
and another will succeed him. And he, uh, this latter one, shall have peace from all who transgress against him. He will be a friend of Zion and die in peace. At the time when the Girdwin in the west collapses upon the Ishmaelites in Damascus, that's in Syria, the kingdom of Ishmael will fall. On that day, the Lord will signal for the fly. The Holy One, blessed be he, will signal for the bees who are in the region of Assyria. And they shall wage war with the Ashkenazim. Uh, that could mean the Germans, that could mean the Khazars, that could mean, uh, could mean the Ashkenazis today, that uh, the supposed Ashkenazi who's descended from Gaon of Vilna, who's descended from David and Sephardic Jews, uh, will be wiped out. The first king who leads them and brings them forth is one who rebelled against their masters, as Scripture attests. Thus says the Lord to the despised one, to the one loathed by the nation, to the slave of kings. And the phrase slave of kings indicates whom? He says the slave, this phrase refers to the Canaanites, the Palestinians, who are the most despised of all nations. In other words, the Amalekites, as Netanyahu said. Regarding the phrase slave of kings, there will be a slave of rulers. Uh, we have to remember that slave of slaves is uh, the curse that was put upon the uh, Canaanites as descendants of Ham. Uh, regarding the phrase slave of kings, there will be a slave of rulers who rebel against his masters and other men who have rebelled against their masters will be gathered to him and assemble themselves with them. They will make war with the Ishmaelites, kill their warriors, and take possession of their wealth and property. <laughs> we destroyed Iraq. We destroyed Libya all at the behest of uh, the Israelites. They are very repulsive men dressed in black and coming forth from the east. They are cruel and impetuous. I suspect that relates to uh, the Turks and to the Chinese uh, who are going to play the role of, uh, I believe, Gomer in uh, Gog and Magog. They are cruel and impetuous, as Scripture attests. Lo, I shall raise up against the Chaldeans, um, that relates to the Iraqis, the nation cruel and impetuous. All of them are horsemen. That's why I sus suspect it relates to Turks, Mongolians, Chinese. Um, the uh, Manchu Chinese were famous horsemen who conquered the Han Chinese. They're actually Koreans, so this could relate also to uh, North Korea and the Manchu in the Qing dynasty who uh, conquered the Chinese people with the help of the Jesuits, by the way. As scripture attests, horsemen charging up, they came from a distant land to take possessions of dwellings that do not belong to them, and they will ascend onto the height of the mountains. This refers to the mountain height of Israel and demolish the sanctuary, extinguish the lamps, and split the um, doors. So we have Genghis Khan, we have the Khazar Turks who converted to Judaism, the Seljuk Turks, the Ottoman Turks, etc., etc., and all of this is to play the role of the uh, behemoth, smiting and destroying Edom, who foolishly comes to the defense of Israel and commits suicide in so doing. There shall arise a king who will turn them to apostasy, as Scripture states, and they will install the abomination of desolation. He will rule for three months. After that, the Ishmaelites will do battle with the Edomites on the plain of Akko. This is up around uh, Lebanon and Tyre and Sidon. Uh, Nezrallah and Hezbollah are to play the role of the king of Tyre, who is Satan and who represents Edom. And immediately the Assyrians will come upon them and capture them. As scripture says, until Assyria takes you prisoner. And as for ships from the coast of Kittim, these are the Edomites who, destined to, who are destined to arise in the last days. We have our ships off the coast of uh, Lebanon. 
set up to attack Syria, set up to attack Hezbollah, now uh, poised to wage war on um, the Yemenites and the Houthis. And all of this is scripted in uh, this book. When they eventually emerge, they will come forth like robbers, as scripture predicts, when robbers come against you. They will do battle with the Ishmaelites and kill many of them and assemble themselves at the camp at Akko. Iron shall crumble clay. Uh, remember the prophecies of Daniel, iron and clay. The Roman Empire was the iron of the Edomites. Uh, they allowed in all foreign peoples who formed the clay that dissolved the iron and destroyed the Romans from within. And its legs will break down to the toes and they will flee naked without horses. New legions from Edom will unite with them, and they will come and do battle on the plain of Akko until a horse sinks to its flank in blood. The children of Israel will flee uh, to the plain of Jericho, And there they will pause and ask one another, to where can we flee? Let us leave here our wives and our children. And today we see uh, Israelis all over Twitter saying, where can we flee? Where do you want us to go? They will return and wage another battle on the plain of Megiddo. That is, uh, as in Armageddon, this is the battle of Armageddon. And the Edomites will flee and board ships, and a wind shall come forth and bring them to Assyria, to Syria. They will oppress the Assyrians and the region of Upper Mesopotamia. Uh, that's the Kurds and uh, the uh, Armenians and the Turks and the Iraqis, as is uh, happening today. But at the end of nine months, the Assyrians shall come forth and destroy the children of Israel. So uh, Jews, beware, you're set up to be slaughtered in all this crap. And the Romans, as scripture states, until Assyria takes you prisoner. When you see Syrians coming forth and travailing about the land of Israel, they will establish peace and Elijah will come forth, the uh, man who heralds the rise of Messiah, son of David and proclaim news of peace to them, as Scripture says. And this will be peace when Assyria comes into our land. The Italians will seek to wage war with them. Uh, that's the Catholics and the Romans. And the kingdom will revert to the Ishmaelites for a while. And part of the Samson plan is to uh, hit Rome with nuclear bombs. But they will not have sufficient time to evacuate their wives before Assyria captures them. Suddenly, a heavenly voice will come forth and proclaim in all the places where the Israelites are, issue forth and exact the vengeance of God against Edom. That could be launching nuclear weapons at us. For scripture says, I will enact my vengeance against Edom by the agency of my people Israel. Uh, as I've shown before, there are countless passages calling for the complete extermination of the Edomites throughout the Old Testament. Immediately, the young men of the Israelites will band together and obey, and they will recognize as king over them a Davidite ruler. However, dissension will break out among them, and the inhabitants of the land of Israel will rebel against the descendant of David. That's a war between the Ashkenazim and the Sepharim. A reaction which will confirm what the scripture says, and Israel has rebelled against the house of David until this day, until this day, signifies the day when the royal Messiah comes. He will be a Sephardic Jew and wipe out the Ashkenazim. He responded to me from the doors of heaven, saying to me, at the end of the kingdom of the Ishmaelites, those are the Muslims and the Marxists, the Romans will go forth against Jerusalem and make war with the Ishmaelites. <laughs> and how can all this be coincidental? The land will be subdued by them because who has it that's been instigating and pitting uh, Muslims and the West against one another? We all know who it is. The land will be subdued by them. They will enter it, i.e. Jerusalem, and slaughter many Ishmaelites and cast down 
numerous corpses on it. And they look forward to this. They, they celebrate this. They will capture a great many Ishmaelite women and dash out the brains of children. What do we see going on in Gaza? They are dashing out the brains of children. And alternative translations have this as babies. They will journey in the company of thick clouds, engage the Edomites, that's us, uh, the Romans, the Europeans, and kill a large number of them. News about them, the tribes have come, will spread throughout the world. At that time, the verse pertaining to Israel will be fulfilled. It's amazing that they knew at this time that they would have communications around the world. At that time, the verse pertaining to Israel will be fulfilled. There will be a time of trouble, the time of trouble of Jacob, the like of which has not occurred since you became a nation. And at that time, all of your people whose names are found inscribed in the book will be delivered. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. The nations will rise up against Israel and effect a great massacre among them. For a very long time, for 25 years, I've been trying to warn Jewish people that all this also targets them. And many of the unlearned will apostatize. They will torture with chains many of the pious so as to make them abandon the Torah of the Lord. We've seen uh, this being inflicted on Jewish people many times in the Holocaust, in, um, in the Inquisition, etc. And it was always, uh, let's call them Zionists, who were behind it. Torquemada was a crypto-Jew. And after they have endured this distress for a short time, the Lord will bring a great and strong wind, a mighty earthquake, and a cloud so dark that its equal has never appeared before the world. That's Seth Typhon. Uh, the Lord of Israel, the God of Israel, is a dark cloud. The dark cloud occupied the Holy of Holies. And throughout the Old Testament, uh, in the Exodus, etc., uh, the God of Israel appeared as a dark cloud. That's uh, the dark cloud of chaos, uh, Seth Typhon. And from the midst of that wind, the Holy One, blessed be He, will disperse the tribes in each and every city, with regard to them, it has been said, who are these who fly about like a cloud? Does this sound good to you, Jews of Israel? Uh, please pay attention to this. You're going to suffer as badly or worse than everyone else. Nehemiah ben Hushiel. That's uh, another name for Messiah, son of Joseph. Israel will gather themselves to Nehemiah ben Hushiel. That's uh, friend Benjamin Netanyahu. The ruler of Egypt will make a pact with him. Notice that the Egyptians are not accepting Palestinians, but are not fighting against Israel. And he, Nehemiah, Nehemiah will effect a slaughter in all cities surrounding Jerusalem. Look what's happening in the uh, West Bank and in Gaza, such as Tiberias, Damascus, and Ashkelon. That's part of the ancient uh, region of Philistia, which um, the Gaza Strip is meant to replicate. The nations of the world will hear about this, and terror and panic will fall upon them. So this attack on the uh, Palestinians taking place with the ruler of Egypt, making a pact with Netanyahu, this has all been scripted a thousand years ago. The sign which will occur at that time is that the stars will appear in blood, and about that time it has been said, the sun will be changed into darkness and the moon to blood, the Holy One, blessed be He, will send ten plagues, those are the birth pangs, mimicking what happened to the Egyptians, supposedly, against the nations of the world, just like the ones He sent against Egypt, so as to affirm what Scripture has said on that day, the Lord will again manifest His power for a second time, in order to acquire the remnant of His people. At that time, He will send for Nehemiah, Benjamin Netanyahu, and all Israel, and he will say to them, Bring me your Torah and testify that I am God. Immediately all Israel will be astonished and intimidated. And at that time we have Netanyahu saying those exact same things. And at that time Nehemiah will arise among, along with three men from the tribe of Ephraim, and they will come bearing a Sefer Torah with them, the book of the Torah, and they will read aloud before him, I am the Lord your God, and you shall not have any other gods before me. 
He will retort, none of this can be in your Torah. I will give you no rest until you believe that I am God. In the same way, the nations of the world will believe in me. Immediately, Nehemiah will arise to confront him. This is uh, the Antichrist. Uh, this is Putin. This is Trump. This is RFK Jr. Whoever the stooge is, they put up to play this scripted role. You are not God, but Satan. He, Armalus, will say to them, and Armalus is in uh, all those other... Uh, Apocalypses, Sefer, Zerubbabel, um, Wars of King Messiah, Avkat, Rochel, etc., that I've been quoting for decades. He, Armalus, will say to them, Why do you lie about me? I could give the order to execute you, and then will command his servants, seize Nehemiah, that's Netanyahu, immediately, and we've seen a tension between Trump and Nehemiah, which could be part of this script, Immediately, he, Nehemiah, will arise along with 30,000 warriors from Israel and do battle with him, and he will slay 200,000 from the camp of Armalus. Armalus relates to Romulus of Rome and uh, was supposed to be birthed from, uh, from a marble statue in Rome of a woman. Enraged, Armalus will gather all the force who represents the Virgin Mary, of course, Enraged, Armalus will gather all the forces of the nations of the world and make war on the Israelite people and kill one million Israelites. So uh, pay attention to that, Jews of the world. You are targeted to have one million of your people slain in this script, in this game that they're playing out, and they will put in a factor of six. And he will even kill Nehemiah at midday. That's the slaughter of Messiah, son of Joseph, which uh, then produces the release of his soul. These are twin messiahs so that the soul of Messiah, son of Joseph, which is the soul of chaos, can enter into the vessel of the body of Messiah, son of David. And this represents the uniting of the two sticks in Ezekiel 37 into a united kingdom. There was only a united kingdom under uh, Saul, David, and Solomon, and they want to bring that about by exterminating Messiah, son of Joseph, by getting rid of Netanyahu, and by getting rid of the Ashkenazi Jews, who represent the 10 northern tribes in their mythology. Concerning this time, it has been said, and it will come to pass on that day, so says the Lord God, that I shall make the sun set at midday and I shall darken the earth. On a bright day, those Israelites who remain alive will flee into the desert of the peoples and remain there for 45 days without food or water. Sound good to you, Jews of Israel? And with, with only wild grass to serve as their sustenance, you're going to graze like the asses who uh, showed Moses where the water was because they represent Seth Typhon. After 45 days have passed, Armalus will invade and make war against Egypt and capture it. Egypt is being set up to be attacked by the West um, because it won't uh, let the uh, Palestinians traverse through Egypt into Europe. As scripture attests, even the land of Egypt will not be a refuge. They, they, they really hate the Egyptians and they want to conquer Egypt. And um, Isaiah chapter 19, 19, verse 19 talks about how they want to build a temple in Egypt. And uh, Josephus talked about that. Then he will turn back and set his face toward Jerusalem in order to devastate it a second time. As scripture states, he will pitch the canopies of his pavilion between the seas at the splendid mountain of holiness. However, he will have reached his limit and no one will aid him. At that time, Michael, the great prince, will stand and blow three blasts of the shofar. We see the blasting of the shofar on uh, January 6th and all over the place. As scripture attests, and it will come to pass on that day that he will blow a great trumpet shofar. Uh, that's in Isaiah 27, which talks about the two serpents. That shofar is actually made from the right horn of the ram of Isaac, which the Holy One, blessed be he, will lengthen until it is 1,000 cubits long. I think that's a foot and a half for each cubit. He will blow a strong blast, and the Messiah of the lineage of David 
and Elijah will be revealed. The Messiah will be born, the end of the birth pangs. Armelus will hear that a king has appeared in Israel, and he will collect the forces of all the nations of the earth, and they will advance against the king, Messiah, and Israel. The Holy One, blessed be he, will fight on behalf of Israel. He will say to the Messiah, sit at my right hand. And the Messiah will say to Israel, assemble yourselves and stand aside and witness the Lord's deliverance. Immediately, the Holy One, blessed be he, will go forth and do battle with them as Scripture promises. The Lord will go forth and do battle with those nations. And it is recorded in Scripture, at that time I will bring you, and at that time I will gather you, for I will make you famous and an object of praise for all the peoples of the earth. Actually, they're all going to be dead by that point. Amen. May that time and occasion be soon. That time and um, that occasion are upon us. And this guy, Benjamin Netanyahu, God has given us the son of his right hand, is uh, setting us up to all be killed. They've openly threatened the world with extinction, uh, with their Samson option. They have Chabadnik Putin threatening to launch a nuclear war on the West. They have those horsemen from North Korea, the Manchu in their black uniforms, threatening to wage nuclear war on the West. They have uh, Anthony Blinken leading the West into suicidal self-destruction by sponsoring the Israelis' extermination of the Philistines that uh, Samson is dropping the temple on in Gaza and in the West Bank and throughout Israel. So... Uh, this script is being played out, and I only read, I only read a few excerpts of this. There's much more to it, and uh, if you're interested, please go and read it. Um, they're going to kill us by design. I've been saying it again and again for 25 years. I've been saying it in public. I've been smeared, slandered, um, impoverished for saying it, but I'm going to keep on saying it, and. Uh, as long as people continue to contribute, I'll be able to say it louder and louder with better and better media. Um, I'm working on making my presentations better. And I, again, want to thank you for getting me through 2023. Uh, I'm deeply grateful to you. And I hope everyone appreciates that this video would not have been possible without uh, contributions from very good people who helped me out a great deal. And I hope you're as grateful to them as I am. <laughs> Please, 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 please pay attention. The plan is to kill us. The plan, and by us, I include the Jews of Israel. Read your own books. You're going to see that by design, they're setting up to wipe out most of you. And uh, all the people who are pretending to be champions of the Palestinian people, and uh, Jews around the world are part of this game to set you up. Many of them are followers of the Gaon of Vilna who call for 600,000 Jews to move to Palestine and exterminate the Palestinians. And they say they're on the Palestinian side. This is very duplicitous. Netanyahu is actually a subversive agent of the Sephardic Jews to set up not only Esau and Ishmael, but also the Ashkenazim for extermination. Read uh, Judah Levy's book on the Khazarians, and you'll see the strong hatred that the Sephardics have always borne towards the Ashkenazim and their plan to wipe you out. This plan is being carried out against all of us. We can stop it. We can, uh, we can save ourselves. We can preserve humanity. We can... Um, save our children. We can turn this all around, but we need to gain the power of the state to do it. We need to abandon uh, the political parties which are in the hands of our enemies, serve as a fifth column of their agenda, and we need good people to stand up and run for office. Um, 
they've set this up uh, to be started in 2023 and to end by uh, 2030. And uh, many of the, the the schedule that they set for these events call for the nine months of the pregnancy, uh, the gestation period, the term of the pregnancy of the Messiah, son of David. So they, they may be planning to drop nuclear bombs on us within nine months. Um, I hope people understand the gravity of all this. Uh, I've been predicting all these events for many decades. I knew that they would try to take over Turkey and the Muslim nations and make them part of an expanded Soviet Union. I wrote about all that in my blog. You can read about it. My blog is archived, despite the fact that they uh, censored my speech, violated my fundamental human rights to warn the world about all of this. I've been right for decades. Uh, I'm going to be right about this. They are going to kill all of us. If we don't stop them, please help and uh, save yourselves. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about all of this, you can find my books at my website, cjbbooks.com. And um, please, I need your contributions to keep making my work better and better and to survive uh, the birth pangs. Thank you all very much for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.